So throughout my years of gardening, I have spent a lot of time and a lot of focus on looking for new and different ground covers that I can incorporate uh, into the garden, whether they uh, hold a lot of nutrients, or they attract beneficial pollinators, or if they have some edible use or some other ecological benefit. And so today I wanna to share with you uh, one plant that I have recently begun to experiment with uh, and I think it holds a lot of promise. So um, let's go check it out. So here we are looking at the bed where I had the black turtle beans, I had the squash there that I had uh, and I had put them all with the grass clipping mulch. Those have all since died back. Beans have rec recently died back um, and those actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those beans back at the base of the roots so the roots stay in the ground but the above ground biomass which is going to have some high nitrogen right from the leaves and from the uh, bean plant material like the immature beans and things of that nature too uh, so I'll add that to the compost right ideally I want to keep those roots in the ground so that they can biodegrade and create more air pockets in the soil to keep it aerated uh, and let water kind of seep in more effectively and then also I don't want to like disrupt those microbial populations in the soil, right? Um, I, I want to disrupt that as little as possible. You'll also see some, uh, some bed straw coming up as well. Great wild edible, fantastic plant to uh, consume and make part of my diet, at least for me. And so I'm also experimenting with it being used as like a cover crop. It just kind of came up on its own, but it comes up when everything else is dying back, right? And then it, uh, kind of uh, keeps kind of low during the winter time and then it really uh, takes off in the springtime and then uh, and then dies back fairly early too or at that point you could even probably in some cir circumstances right if you were to use it as a cover crop uh, you know you might be able to work it into the soil somehow too to get all that green biomass into the soil to decompose break down and add in more uh, nutrients and nitrogen right so anyway what i'm going to do also aside from taking out the, be the bean detritus in here is i'm going to then also plant some rye and garlic in here as well and the bed straw can you know grow in between all that um, and i want to do that so i have some more diversity in here as well and then just some more soil coverage because the bed straw is only kind of coming up in certain areas so here we are in early spring of 2024. We are revisiting this um, patch of where I have the garlic and the bed straw. Um, some of the uh, the rye is down. The rye is down that way. We can uh, check that out in a minute. And so we can see the bed straw is beginning to kind of spread out, right, and really kind of. Um, become that ground cover. The last few weeks the garlic has also been able to sprout up and the garlic occupies a deeper root zone so they're not really competing for nutrients at all. Additionally the bed straw as it spreads out over the ground it can provide habitat for uh, beneficial spiders, predatory ground beetles, and other such insects that can help to control pest insects eventually and probably fairly soon in a few weeks this bed straw will also begin to flower and its flowers will attract uh, certain beneficial pollinators like hoverflies that can also be predatory for certain pest insects like aphids and then it can also attract right different types of bees maybe some beneficial flies i'd really like to um, get out here with a camera when it is in flower so maybe we can see and identify the different types of uh, beneficial insects that visit the flowers um, and we can get some more specific understanding as to what types of insects these flowers attract. There's some bittercress um, down here too that is already in flower um, and some dandelions as well. So those will help kind of bring in a few beneficial insects as well. And then, and then as we transition over here, this is of course the winter rye area where the uh, 
the bed straw seem to be coming up less, uh, more sparsely at this end of the uh, at this end of the bed. So I planted some uh, some winter rye along uh, along with the garlic. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video on using the bed straw as a cover crop. All right, some of these plants can kind of get a bad rap and occupy like a negative space in uh, a lot of people's minds because you know they're like a weed or something but really maybe for some of these weeds you know uh, there are spaces where we can um, learn to work with these plants and um, uh, you know and, and kind of incorporate them healthily into uh, the garden scenario right so how can we learn to adapt to the flow of the landscape as it is presently and work to maintain and not only that but enhance uh, the ecosystem's health from there. So thank you so much for checking out this video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.